Hello everybody. So today is February. Give me one moment while I check and see what today is. Hold on. Oh, it is February the I mean March the third, two thousand seventeen, and it is nine twenty six p.m. So I'm making a video pretty late in the day today. Uh, what I'm going to be doing right now is reading one of these papers I had told you guys about. I'm just skimming through them to see which one I want to read. I know which one I want to read. I want to read this one today. And this one is called... Let me bring you guys a little bit closer. Okay. This is what this one looks like. Got quite a bit of pages. So it says, Deliverance from Tobacco. In his search for happiness, man has taken many ways that have left him disappointed. Among these have been wealth, social activities, and the use of tobacco and alcohol. All this has left man with an emptiness within. In John chapter 4, verse 1 to 30, Jesus refers to his em emptiness in his encounter with the woman of Samaria, who was drawing water from a well. He offered her living water that would satisfy the thirst of her soul. The well water satisfied her physical thirst, but Jesus satisfied her inner thirst. Perhaps not many people today would admit that they have a need of need or an inner thirst in their lives. Even though physical actions and desires often suppress this need, it is still there for this reason Jesus for this reason, God sent Jesus to deliver man from the temptations and sins of this world, our flesh. He holds out hope to captives of sin that there is freedom and renewal for hearts and minds. We can play. Why do people use tobacco? Why do people use tobacco today? Does it give lasting satisfaction? Perhaps friends whom one admires have this habit, so smoking looks desirable. Sometimes people feel the need to do certain things they otherwise wouldn't just do, wouldn't just to be accepted. Is there any underlying feeling in, of insecurity that demands fulfillment? It would be good if everyone would seriously analyze these questions. Insecurities often cause a person to fill his time with activities that take the mind off the more important things of, of life. Sometimes habits are developed that give one the outward appearance of being in control. Nervous people often seem to need something in their hands to calm themselves. They become dependent on cigarettes but find no casting calmness. Many young people are influenced to try cigarettes. Their friends may offer them a smoke. Advertisements show healthy young adults using tobacco, giving the impression that this is the thing to do. Some may imitate parents who smoke. They feel that they can control their desire to smoke and are sure that they can quit at any time. Too late, they realize they cannot quit but are at it addicted to tobacco. Is tobacco sinful? In the use of tobacco wrong, does the Bible say it is a sin? There are frequently asked these are frequently asked questions that desire that deserve answers. That deserve an answer. No, the Bible does not signif significantly mention the use of tobacco but it does give directions and principles that can be used as a guide. The Bible clearly teaches that our, in 
that our bodies are not our own, that they are intended to be temples for God and for his Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 13, chapter 3, 16, 17 shows that it is sinful to harm or defile our bodies. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelling dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are in are. The use of tobacco has been clearly shown to whew, weaken and even destroy the body that was meant to bring honor and service to God. Wow. I needed to be reading this today. Because i got to stop smoking cigarettes. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not uh, your own? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19. God pleased with men to obtain, abstain from those fleshly appetites that dull their spiritual senses. Dearly beloved, I bless you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war which war against the soul. One Peter two eleven. Both the distractions from real values and the carnal pleasure sought in the use of tobacco identify it as an agent that wars against the soul. The use of tobacco is an effort to satisfy the fleshly nature. The Bible says, They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit and things of the spirit. Romans chapter 8, 5. God wants his servants to live pure, pure lives, separated from the unbelieving society which surrounds them. Accepting Christ in his way, bearing his cross, will cause a person to live differently. From those who are not Christians, the Apostle Paul wrote, But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Galatians chapter 6 verse 14 can it be said that the use of tobacco is a clean, pure, humorless, I mean, harmless habit that is an offensive to others? Does it belong to a person who has been separated from the world by the cross of Christ? We must conclude that its use identifies one with those many others on the broad road who seek their own pleasure rather than the will of God. Misuse of resources. The need to spend money for tobacco often deprives children and other adults of the needful things of life, food and clothing and even homes. This selfish use of money is causing much suffering and discomfort in the world today. Billions of dollars are spent annually purchasing tobacco for our selfish pleasure. The Lord says, Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth, satisfieth not? Hearken diligently upon me, diligently upon me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 2. And then it says, God can deliver. God loves you and wants you to come to him just as you are. He is well able to deliver you, even though tobacco is strongly addictive and you may have a craving for it. God will gladly bring him, God will gladly bring his, his almighty power to bear upon your problem. Who is a God like unto thee that pardons you? In quantity, in quantity, and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He reigneth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. 
He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our inquiries, and thou wilt cast all our all their sin into the depth of the sea. Micah, Micah chapter 7, verse 18, 19. If you are using tobacco, there may be many questions that come to your mind. You may ask, what will my friends think if I stop smoking? What will they think if I can't stop? I've tried before and failed. The desire for a cigarette is so strong. Smoking one gives me some relief until I need the next one. Who will help? Does God understand how I feel? God sees your heart. He not only sees your habits and problems, but he sees how Satan has trapped you. Your own pride may have brought you into these problems through your desire to find acceptance from your friends. Jesus died on the cross to bring deliverance from the hard master of sin. Those who recognize their need for deliverance and crucify self will find help. Romans chapter 6 verse 5 16 instructs us for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his res resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth, henceforth we should not serve sin. God crucified us in his image and accepted expects us to glorify him with our lives in scriptures say in 1 Corinthians 6:20 for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's those things that do not glorify God are in the very things that leave an especially empty feeling afterward People are tempted to do them again and again, trying to find pleasure, but all but alas, but alas, it does not last. God's compassion and mercy reach out to those caught in those caught in this circle of vice to lift them into the newness of life in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5. Verse 17. I'm sorry for y'all. I don't know if that was boring to y'all, but this was a lot to read, and I need to listen to this because I think I'm, I'm done smoking cigarettes because uh, I'm tired of that having some kind of control over me. Like, for real, so we're gonna call we're gonna title this video Deliverance from Tobacco. So that's the name of this packet right here. Um the other day we read A Friend for You. So we're gonna put those two back there. Um the next one we're gonna read is let's see. But we're not gonna read it right now. We're going to read this one. Listen, who is calling you? That's going to be the next one. Okay, so that's going to be end for that video. This video. Um, yeah, I'm just chilling for the rest of the day till I go out later on. Um, I got my eyebrows done by my man. He did my eyebrows. <laughs> so... Yep. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Bye.